So uh, Zimbabwe is rich in natural resources. For more on that, uh, let's uh, turn into uh, for, for more on Zimbabwe's ecosystem. Let's cross live to our correspondent uh, Farai Makutuya in Harare. Uh, hello, uh, Farai. Uh, we know that Zimbabwe is famous for its uh, variety of species, such as birds, uh, mammals, and fish. So can you tell us more about that, and also Zimbabwe's efforts to protect the biodiversity and ecosystem in the country? Well, certainly Zimbabwe is home to the famous Big Five, which is a huge drawcard for local and international tourists. In fact, at one point, Zimbabwe had the highest concentration of black rhinoceros on the continent. However, those numbers have been depleted due to poaching. As you quite rightly mentioned, there are over 4,000 plant species, over 270 mammals, and over 600 bird species. When you talk about aquaculture, Zimbabwe is very famous for uh, our fish varieties, tiger fish, lungfish, a lot of sports uh, fishing people come to this country to fish uh, those varieties. In terms of protecting the environment, the government has made concerted efforts. They've set up dedicated government departments such as the Environmental Management Authority, the Forestry Commission of Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority. And what they do is that they've set up sanctuaries, they've set up reserves where animals and wildlife can be protected, can grow and be nurtured in their own habitat. They've also done a lot of uh, awareness campaigns and anti-poaching campaigns. So uh, a lot of efforts being made here to protect and balance the ecosystem in this country. Studio. Well, for our large parts of uh, Zimbabwe were once covered by forests, abundant with wildlife. Uh, but the area covered by forest has reduced in recent years. Why is that? Well, we know that at, some, at one point it was estimated that about 49% of the country is forest and woodland. Those forests are being depleted. Um, as populations are growing, they are encroaching into forest areas. They use that, uh, uh, those trees for uh, building their homes for firewood. There's a lot of agriculture happening in this country as well. A big agricultural revolution has meant that many people are using firewood, are clearing firewood to make uh, space for their uh, farmlands. They're also using firewood to cure tobacco and things like that so it's a really a big challenge deforestation in this country but there are efforts underway to protect uh, the remaining forests and to replenish them I recently had an opportunity to travel to an area called Chendambuya it's about 200 kilometers outside of the capital Harare and there are efforts underway there to encourage Zimbabweans at grassroots level at household levels to start growing trees to replenish some of those forests here's that story from that trip I took to Chendambuya <laughs> This is Makoni district, some 200 kilometers east of Harare. According to a 2012 population census, the district has 64,000 households. Environmentalists are hoping that each of these can plant at least 100 trees over the next 12 months, which will ensure 6.4 million new trees. Villagers are being trained on how to nurse seedlings and being given the inputs required in preparation for the tree planting season which kicks off in the last quarter of the year. We are providing uh, these pockets, plastic pockets, seed. Uh, that these are what we are providing to the people. The people themselves will have to have manure, well rotted manure, uh, river sand, and then grass. So these are the components. And uh, the place must be have plenty of water up to about October. The uptake has been encouraging. It may seem like a small step now, but the launch of this program is the crucial first step in a program that will address an environmental challenge that could haunt Zimbabwe many years down the line. At the current rate of deforestation believed to be 330,000 hectares per year, Zimbabwe could be on the verge of desertification by the year 2056. Village elders, alive to the danger, have sprung to action inviting partners to help replenish the forests. We are happy that this program has been launched because the forests here have been depleted by people using firewood. Right now, traditional healers cannot use traditional remedies from tree roots because they no longer exist and even our children have never seen our indigenous trees. Beyond posterity, there are economic benefits. A large number of communal farmers are turning to tobacco growing. Wood-fired barns are now the most cost-effective means for curing the crop, compelling communities to ensure a steady supply of forests to feed this demand. If this pilot project is successful, it will be rolled out across the country. 
Farai Mwakutuya, Makoni, Zimbabwe. Well, there is Well, there is that story where I took a trip to Chenambuya and Makoni district to find out what's been happening at a household level to encourage Zimbabweans to grow more trees. I'm now joined by Caroline Washaya Moore. She's from the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority. They're one of the agencies that is mandated to protect Zimbabwe's ecosystem and Zimbabwe's wildlife. Caroline, we know that human settlements are encroaching into wildlife areas and forest areas. What is being done to try and uh, strike a balance? Uh, thank you very much, Farai, for taking us on board. Let me start by saying slightly over 13% of uh, the land in Zimbabwe is reserved for conservation. Indeed, communities have encroached into wildlife areas, and some of the areas that have been, been affected include Matopos National Park, Gonarejo National Park, Chirisa Sengwe, and Umfurudzi Recreational Park. The reasons that communities, through investigations that we carried out, communities say that they don't, the biggest being, they don't see a direct benefit that they're deriving from the purposes of uh, protecting these areas. The other reason being, they settled in areas where they wake up the, the next morning and they want to start uh, farming projects. But due to poor soils, they, they, they're not yielding anything. The other reason was that due to traditional beliefs, they say, my ancestors were buried in a particular area which is within a national park so they feel they should be settled in that particular area but the problems that we face include increased poaching once our communities encroach into these areas we face uh, uh, wildlife moving uh, uh, everywhere we also face a threat to poisoning of water bodies we also face uh, a threat to even they, themselves as human beings, because they are exposing their lives to this wildlife. But they are also creating a, an area where uh, lions and cheetahs easily feed on. This is a, an easy feeding ground for lions and, 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 and cheetahs. Okay, Caroline, what about the economic benefits? Because obviously flora and fauna, wildlife comes with economic benefits. How easy has, uh, has Zimbabwe found it to balance the economic benefits versus the conservation uh, efforts? Farai, uh, tourism in this country is wildlife-based, and tourism contributes uh, immensely to the country's GDP. Uh, so I think as a nation, there, is, there should be need to deliberately uh, stop issues like mining uh, within a, a, a protected area, issues like agriculture within a protected area, and to engage communities and ensure that they see direct benefits. By direct benefits, we're looking at road infrastructure within the communities. Schools are built as a result of wildlife. Clinics are built as a result of wildlife. That you build a natural security around a protected area and it in turn feeds into the country's uh, 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 finances and uh, the country uh, contributes, it, it contributes positively to its GDP. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline. That was Caroline Washayamoyo from the Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Management Authority telling us some of the efforts that are being made to conserve uh, Zimbabwe's wildlife, Zimbabwe's ecosystem. Uh, my name is Farai Mwakutuya, uh, live in Harare, Zimbabwe. It is back to you in the studio in Beijing. Thank you very much indeed. That was our correspondent, Farai Mwakutuya, in Harare.